Hey, welcome. If this is your first time here, I just want to welcome you. My name is John, and alongside my wife, Vanessa, we get this amazing privilege to lead this community that we call Discovery, and uh, we are in week two of our series, Favor Ain't Fair. Favor Ain't Fair. It's just kind of fun to say, Favor Ain't Fair. I don't care what you say. I'm going to drink to that. That's good. Favor Ain't Fair. And so if you uh, didn't join us last week, um, just a quick recap. We looked at this idea that, uh, that we don't walk in favor, we walk with favor. And, and so this, this idea of that uh, favor is not a result, but favor is a person. Favor goes by the name of Jesus. And so the moment that you uh, make a decision to follow Jesus, the moment you decide to, uh, to make Jesus the Lord or the boss of your life is the moment that you step into the favor that he has for you. And so that was kind of just setting the, the, the foundation uh, for, uh, for this series of, of Favor Ain't Fair. And today we're going to be in John chapter 3, John chapter 3 and verse 22. And we're going to read it. It might be on the screen. It is on the screen. Then Jesus and his disciples left Jerusalem and went into Judea countryside. Jesus spent time, some time with them there, some time with them there, baptizing. I'm going to read it from my notes. Uh, baptizing people. At this time, John the Baptist was baptizing at Enon near Salim because they were, there was plenty of water there, and the people kept coming to him for baptism. Uh, this was before John was thrown into prison. A debate broke out between John's disciples and a certain Jew over ceremonial cleansing. So John's disciples came to him, and he said, Rabbi, means teacher, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, he's referring to Jesus, the one you identified as the Messiah, is also baptizing people. And everybody is going to him instead of coming to us. Everyone is going to Jesus instead of coming to us. This morning, if you're taking notes, I want to talk to you briefly from the subject, when favor seems unfair. When favor seems unfair. Or uh, if you're into subtitles, uh, you, can, you can title this message this, WTF, Where's the Favor? Where's the Favor? Let's pray one more time. Father, we love you. God, we thank you. For this opportunity that we have to be here uh, together, God, we, we pray that uh, through this time, through the worship, through, through the word, uh, that you would just uh, minister to our hearts. God, we know that it says in your word that your word is only as good as the condition of our heart. And so we pray right now that you would just give our hearts good ground, that the word, the seed, would fall on our hearts and it would produce a harvest. God, we want to leave here changed. We want to leave here better, but not for our own benefit, but so that we can change the world around us, God. And so we love you this morning. We honor you. In Jesus' name, come on, everyone say it. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hey, here's something I bet you have never, ever done, okay? I bet you've never done this, every single person in this room. I bet you have never, ever faked being happy for someone. I bet you've never, <laughs> I bet you've never done that. Like you have never, you have never acted happy for someone when deep down inside you're like, probably never, probably never, right? Like that time, that time that your friend called you up and she was like, girl, I'm getting married. He put a ring on it. <laughs> and you're like, I'm so happy. <laughs> but deep down inside, you're like, what? I'm way better looking. <laughs> I'm just, you probably never thought that either. <laughs> or, or that time that you and your friend, you were going for that same job position, that same job title, and uh, you guys both applied. And then your buddy calls you up, and he's like, hey, I got the job. And you're like, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I bet you nobody in this room has ever done that. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I do that. 
Okay? And, and it's, it's when I'm sick. I do it a lot when I'm sick. I do it a lot when I'm sick and when I'm also on social media while I'm sick. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm sick in bed and I can't, I can't eat anything. I haven't, I, I like, I haven't like consumed anything, like, but I like put things out and, um, and, 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 and I'm on Instagram and someone's like posting, look at my yummy burger, right? And like, I can't even be happy for them. I'm like, I hope you chew it really well, <laughs> you know, like it goes dark quick, guys. It really does. Some of y'all are judging me right now. Just chill. Or like when, when I'm sick and I see someone posting that they're at like on vacation somewhere and I'm stuck in bed, I can't move. And like, I'm like, oh, I'm so happy for you. Not really. Not really. But I bet, I bet you have never, ever done that. You have never faked happy when deep down inside you weren't happy. Now, here, here's the deal with all fun aside is that if we're honest, we probably have all been that person that faked happy on the outside, but on the inside, we were a little bitter. Inside, we were a little, why did that happen to them, but not to me? Now, here's what's interesting. In Scripture, uh, we, we we're going to read a verse in Romans chapter 12. And what's interesting is that the Apostle Paul gives us um, instructions on how we're supposed to respond when people, how we celebrate people's success. And it's Romans chapter 12 and verse 14. And he says, that, or excuse me, verse 15, and he writes this, Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. So let's put it into context. The Apostle Paul, he's writing to the church in Rome. And uh, so he's writing to a bunch of believers. So if you're in this room or if you're online and you would identify as a Christian, as a Jesus follower, someone who's made a decision to follow Christ, he's also talking to you. And he says this. He says, as a believer, it is my pleasure. Come on, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> As a believer, it is my pleasure to celebrate when the tangible favor of God is over your life. That's what I thought. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Like, as a believer, it is my responsibility to celebrate, to rejoice when you're rejoicing. Amen. Thank you. As a believer, it's, it's my responsibility. It's, it's, it's my pleasure to rejoice in those moments. But if we're honest, like for the most part, it is, it, it's easy to do this, right? It, for the most part. But what I've discovered is that I have a hard time celebrating someone else's success. It, it, let me say it this way. My ability to celebrate someone's success unfortunately hinges on my current state and situation. And, and, and so we're going to, so last week I, I had talked about how there's two, two different ways that we experience the favor of God. Uh, there's tangible favor and there's a faith statement favor, right? So the tangible favor of God is like when we, we can actually feel and we can see the tangible favor of God moving on our behalf. Like, you get that job that you know you're way underqualified for. We're like, whoo, that's the favor of God. And we love the tangible favor of God. But a lot of the times, we, uh, we, we stay in this realm of faith statement, when the favor is a faith statement. And so I don't really see it in the moment, but I believe it because, remember, favor is not a result. It's a person. And, and so... And, and so when, when, I'm, when, when I'm experiencing the favor of God and it's tangible, when you call me up and you're like, I just got a job. When, when, when I'm experiencing the, the tangible favor of God, I'm like, whoa, yes. Congratulations. And I'm happy because I got a job as well. I got a raise as well. But when, when, when the favor is more of a faith statement and you call me up and you're like, hey, uh, John, so I got this job. Woo! I'm like, hmm, wow, 
you got the job. I didn't get the job. And they cut my hours at work. Really happy for you. Right? Is this, is this relating to anyone? And, and, and so, like, it's when, when, when the favor that I'm walking with is more of a faith statement than it is a tangible expression, manifestation of the favor of God. Like, all of a sudden, it is harder for me to celebrate your success. And if I'm not careful, what I've discovered is that my, the favor that, that I'm experiencing, that it can become distorted by allowing jealousy to seep, seep in. Right, like if there's anything, if there is ever an enemy of favor, it's jealousy. If there is ever something that could, that could, um, uh, that that would would uh, just just ruin the flow of, of my perception of favor, it's 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 jealousy. And so we're actually going to look at that. the The author James writes this in James chapter three. He says this, but if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. So he's like, he's like, don't fake it. Don't pretend to be like, oh, I'm really happy for you. But inside you're like, I'm not happy for you. He said, he said, uh, don't cover up, cover it up with, with what you think the truth is with boasting and lying. Verse 15, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. So, so God sees things different than you and I, ladies and gentlemen. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy, watch this. Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. So when I allow jealousy to take root in my heart, all of a sudden what it does is it disrupts the favor that I'm walking with. And it does it because it, James says it right here, it causes disorder and it also caught an and evil of every kind. We know in Ephesians chapter 4.30, it's, uh, uh, Paul, the author is like, hey, don't grieve the Holy Spirit by the way you live. And, and, and so, so here, here is this, like, when, when I allow jealousy to take root in my heart, like, it disrupts the favor that I'm experiencing that God has for my life. And so if I'm not careful, all of a sudden, the favor that I'm supposed to be walking with falls in line with disorder, falls in, 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 falls in chaos, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, my mind is not wrapped on the favor that I have, but it's, it's, it's lost in other things. And so what I want us to do is we're going to look at the story that we read at the very beginning of our time together uh, with John the baptizer and Jesus, because I think there's some things that we can pull out um, from that story. And so, so here is uh, the, the story that we read at the very beginning. This takes place after the miracle that we actually looked at last week. Where Jesus, he turns water into wine, okay? So Jesus, he does this miracle. Uh, he, he's this like, amazing party trick. He's like, hey, bring me some water. And it turns into wine, okay? And, and for some reason, like, people were drawn to that. They were like, hey, I'm following this guy, you know? And so, so he has a following. Jesus has this following after this miracle. And all of a sudden, Jesus, he's now baptizing people. And so the text that we just read uh, says that they, uh, Jesus and his disciples, they started baptizing people in this, this body of water, this, this large body of water. And in the same body of water, a little down the way, John, the OG baptizer, was also baptizing people. And uh, John's disciples, they, they get word of this. And they're a little like, they're a little shaken up. A little bit of conflict takes place. And so they go, and we read in, in, in John 3 that uh, a, a Jewish man, most uh, scholars believe it was a, a Pharisee, came and, and met up with John's disciples, and they begin to have a discussion. We read in the text that this discussion had to do with ceremonial cleansing. Now, 
we don't, under, we, we don't get the privilege of, of, of hearing verbatim what they're talking about. We don't really know what they're saying, but we do know how the disciples responded once they left this conversation. We, we don't know what they were saying. We don't know what the Pharisee guy was saying to the disciples about ceremonial hand cleansing. Like It, it doesn't say in Scripture, but what we do know is that when the disciples left that conversation, their perspective shifted. And so uh, their, their perspective shifted. So jealousy, watch this, jealousy blinds my perspective. Jealousy blinds my perspective. They, John the Baptist, it, and, or excuse me, John the Baptist's disciples, they left the conversation with, with this Pharisee, and, and they come back, and what, what we see is, is, is their perspective shifted. See, all of a sudden, let's back up. First off, we, we got to realize the, the, um, the favor, if you will, that John the Baptist, John the Baptizer and, and his disciples were experiencing. Like they were baptizing so many people. They had a following. For crying out loud, they baptized Jesus himself. They were doing pretty good for themselves. And here they are, they, they're doing really good. But after this conversation, whatever this conversation was, they left the conversation and they stopped focusing on the favor that they were experiencing and they shifted their focus on someone else's favor. If I'm not careful, I will neglect the favor that I'm walking with and begin to focus on what someone else is doing, someone else's favor, what God is doing in someone else's life. And once I do that, I begin to neglect all that God is doing with me currently. All of a sudden, like what God is wanting to do in my life, it's like it's cheapened now. Because it's not what God's doing in that person's life. It's not what God is doing in, in your life. It's, it's, and, and all of a sudden, man, like forget about what God is doing in my life because I want what God is doing in your life. And all of a sudden, jealousy, what it does is it, it shifts my perspective. It changes the way that, that I'm viewing things. It, it, changes, it changes my heart. It changes my mind. It changes my perspective on things. And so we, we just got to be careful with, this, with, with, this, with jealousy allowing to rob us from celebrating someone else's success. And so, so there, here they are, the, 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 the disciples, they, they left this conversation. We, again, we don't know what they said. We do know that they came and they were just a little bit like, they were a little shaken up. And they go up to Jesus. They go up to Jesus and um, they go up to Jesus and, and they, they have like this, this really awkward conversation with, or excuse me, they go up to John the, Bap, the, John the baptizer and they're like, hey, John, can we talk to you for a sec? And like, John's like, yeah. And, and they have this conversation with John, the baptizer. They're saying, hey, John, I think we're doing a lot of cool things here. Um, but I don't know if you noticed over there, uh, the guy that you baptized, the one that you were like, hey, he's the Messiah. <laughs> Uh, well, he's over there baptizing people. John's like, yeah, that's amazing. That's great. Well, John, I don't know if it really is. Um, so uh, if you can see that Jesus has more people over there than over here. Like, you see that? All of a sudden, you read it in the text, they're tr they're, they begin to look over what Jesus is doing. And they begin, they begin to talk to, to, to John about like, hey, everyone stops, is stopping to follow us and they're following Jesus over there. They're, they're leaving what we're doing and they're going over there. Now, maybe you never had a problem with people baptizing, but maybe uh, for you it's something more practical. Like, hey, they have a better car. 
Hey, their business is more successful. Hey, their marriage is better. What's going, what's wrong here? It's broken. <laughs> and this is what's taking place in the text that we're reading. They're, they're, they're trying to tell John, like, hey, John, like, that's our competition now, man. That's our competition. And here's the second thing that I, that I just, I think is, is, is a thing, like, I can't celebrate what I think I'm competing with. I can't celebrate what I think I'm competing with. And so as long as you see me as competition, you'll never be able to celebrate my success. Because you'll always think that what I have, you should have had. As long as I'm viewing you as competition, I can never celebrate in your success. Because I'm always going to think that what you have, I deserve. And so John, like this is either hitting really hard or it's going over everyone's head because y'all are quiet. But it's okay, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going because I'm almost done anyways. And we can probably have the keys up too. And, and, and so, so like this, this like if, 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 I'm, if I'm thinking that you're my competition, if I always see you as competition, like I will never be able to celebrate in your success because I'm always going to think that you, what you have, I deserve. And so, like, there's this mind shift that has to take place. And, and the disciples, they go up to John, and they're like, John, what do we do, man? Like, they're taking all of our people. Their ministry is growing bigger than ours. People like them more than they like us. They have better numbers. They're hitting better quotas. They're having a better semester. They're having a better quarter. What are we going to do about it? Maybe we can sabotage them. Maybe we can put piranhas in their, I don't know, like, I don't know. I don't know. That was weird. That was weird, yeah. Yeah, quite the visual. Like, maybe there's something that we can do so that those people come back to us. And John, what we're about to read, he responds in such a way that I think is a game changer for us. In fact, I think that what John is about to say, that if you and I continue to rehearse this in our mind, I think no matter, we're, no matter if we're facing a tangible favor or a faith statement favor, like we will always be able to celebrate. You guys want to hear what he says? Here it is. Verse 27, John replied, No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. They're like, John, we got to do something, man. They're taking our people. John, we got to do something. And John's like, no, we don't. Because they only can receive what God is giving them. John, we got to do something, man. They're, pretty soon we're going to be irrelevant. No, we don't have to worry about it. Because whatever they're receiving, it's because God's giving it to them. If I could learn that whatever you're getting is not because you deserve it, hello, it's not because you earned it. It's not because you worked hard for it. But when I understand you only are getting it because God gave it to you, I don't have to worry about trying to, trying to become better or I don't have to worry about trying to sabotage you. I just got to believe that, hey, if God is going to bless them, then I believe he's going to soon enough bless me. And I just got to learn to celebrate in your success. When things are going good for you and they suck for me, I'm still going to be like, praise God, hallelujah. You celebrate your success because I rejoice when you rejoice. I mourn when you mourn. 
And it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the kindness of the Father. And I think that if we could remember that, if we could learn and, and just remember and rehearse that, and I'm preaching to myself this morning too. When I learn that, things can change. When I can learn to celebrate your success because I understand that what you're receiving is only because God's goodness. I like, it like puts like a shield around my heart. And jealousy, it tries to come, but it's not able to penetrate my heart. And so this morning, my heart for you guys and for myself is that we would learn to celebrate one another. That when God is showing favor to someone, that we can celebrate. That when God is, 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 is doing something in someone else's life, when God is healing that person, but I'm still sick, like I'm still celebrating. I'm still excited. I'm still happy. Because I believe that postures me to be ready for what God has for me. Amen, somebody?